The UK government has spent millions of pounds in recent years on the so-called Prevent Programme that's aimed at stopping Muslims in the country from falling under the influence of radicals. It's supposed to serve as a counter-terrorism strategy, but many claim it's counterproductive, with some Muslims saying it's blatant discrimination by authorities. RT's Laura Smith reports. Preventing terrorism, a powerful phrase used to excuse all manner of abuses, from governments spying on their own citizens to foreign wars. Now Muslims in the UK are accusing the government of scapegoating them in the fight against terror and creating what they're calling a cradle-to-grave police state. They say the police strategy known as Prevent monitors Muslims and tries to change ideologies in every area of their life. So it's an all-encompassing policy that's touching on every aspect of Muslim life in a neg negative way which um, encourages discrimination. You've got to remember that uh, when one person has been affected in this way, the whole family has. They tell their family, they tell their friends, they tell others. So this is becoming a shared experience amongst the Muslim community. The whole community is now experiencing what's happening in Prevent. Despite the fact that human rights organisations have branded the strategy unacceptably intrusive into the lives of ordinary Muslims and based not on preventing terrorism but on changing ideology, beliefs and values, it appears set to be enshrined into law. And it's not the only example of politicians seeking to make capital out of apparently discriminating against Muslims. Gerard Batten is immigration spokesman for the UK Independence Party. He wants British Muslims to sign a code of conduct that affirms the equality of all people, equal rights for women, rejects violence and promotes tolerance. Well, I can't see how anybody could object to it. I mean, if you say to anybody anywhere in the world, do you think that uh, people should be treated equally, men and women should be treated equally, uh, you know, there should be no uh, violence, there should be no compulsion in religion, everybody should be free to follow their own religion, who would not sign it? Only people who don't believe those things. Batten argues the document would help moderate Muslims to distinguish themselves from extremists. But Muslims themselves say it's just another way of singling them out and it doesn't lead anywhere good. This is what leads to, um, you know, fascism against other communities. This is what, uh, inevitably what will happen as more and more people think it's perfectly all, all right to target women who wear hijab or niqab or get them to sign a code of conduct. The worry that as policies like these become part of everyday life, casual Islamophobia follows, pitting community against community and dividing society. Laura Smith, RT, London.